Welcome to Applied Maths. We're looking at the modeling project. I'm going to add a line, a simple project for you, and I'm looking at the modeling cycles. We're going to go through three models. I'm not doing the project for you. I'm just giving you some ideas as to how you might do the project. So the title of my project is a mathematical model to describe human populations. My variables are population P, which I have in billions, and time t, which I'm going to put in decades. I just thought years were too close together to see proper trends. Here's my data. In the year 2010, the population is 6.83 billion. And then in 2022, it's just over 8 billion. We have something called the carrying capacity. That's reckoned to be about 12 billion. In other words, what we're saying with that is that's probably the maximum population that can live on the earth because if it goes beyond that, there's going to be scarcity of water, space, food, and so on. So let me describe model one for you, which is a very simple model, which I want, I want to get some kind of mathematical formula that will describe that population and predict the population in the future. So let's go to our notes. And you have model number one. So this is a very simple approach. And all we're going to say here is that the rate of change of the Earth's population is directly proportional to the population. So how quickly it increases depends on how many people are already there. That makes sense. So let me have a look at that. We're going to start off by solving that differential equation in general. So what I'm saying is the rate of change of the population, dp dt, is directly proportional to the existing population. And as you know, if something is directly proportional to something, you can make it equal by putting in a constant of proportionality, and that constant we'll call k. So dp dt is equal to k times p. That's a very simple differential equation to solve. It's a first order separable differential equation. We're going to put the p's on the left. So dp divided by p is equal to, I'm going to put the t's on the right, leave the k where it is, k times dt. Now integrate. You can integrate that, it's 1 over p, it's the inverse linear function. You know what the answer to that is, that's the natural log of p. And that's equal to k times 1 dt is t plus c. So there's my solution. I've got two constants in it. I'm going to have to use extra information to work out those constants. Let me tidy that up a little bit more before I go further. Let me escape from logs. That's log to base e. Escape from logs by hooshing. So therefore, p is equal to e to the power of. Put all that right-hand side up onto the right-hand shoulder of the e. Now, I could break that down like this. I could break that down as e to the power of kt by e to the power of c. Because all you do when you have the same base is you add the powers to get that uh, step back. Now, e to the power of c is some constant. So why don't I uh, bring that into a single constant called capital A. So now I've got p is equal to a times, where capital A is e to the power of c e to the power of kt. So now basically, I, to get my full solution, I need to find a and I need to find k. So I'm going to use what I call my boundary conditions, my extra information that I'm going to take from my table of data. So let's go back to our notes. So we want to now determine the constants A and K. Um, that value of K is known as the per capita, the per head, growth rate per decade, because I'm putting time in decades. Well, what's my extra information? Well, we're starting with the year 2010. So we'll put time is equal to zero there. And the population you'll get from your table is 6.83 billion. And then, one decade later, because I'm putting time in decades, that's 2020. T is now equal to one, one decade after that. And the population there 
is 7.89 billion. So if you look at your table of results, here's our table. So we're going to start here 2010. So we're going to have T is equal to zero there. Uh, the population is 6.83 billion. And then one decade later, that's 2020, that's T is equal to one. You can now see the population is 7.89 million. So we're going to use that information to find out my values of A and K. So let's start off my first boundary condition. T is equal to zero. P is equal to 6.83. So let me put it in here. So P is 6.83. That's equal to A times e to the power of t is zero so we get e to the power of zero and e to the power of zero of course is one so therefore a is equal to 6.83 billion well let me now fill that in to my solution so p is equal to a times 6.83 e to the power of kt so now i'm going to use my next bit of information <clears throat> to find the value of k so when t is equal to 1, which is in the year 2020, we said the population p is 7.89 billion. Right, so let's put it in here. p is 7.89. That's equal to 6.83 by e to the power of k times 1 e to the power of k. So I'm not going to solve that for k. So 7.89 divided by 6.83 is equal to e to the power of k. Let me get the natural log of both sides. So the log of 7.89 divided by 6.83. And when you get the log of e to the power of k, you have that famous ln e rule. When they come together, they cancel. So I'm just left with k. So let me go to the calculator and work out that value of k. So on my calculator, I'm going to get shift log fraction 7.89 on top divided by 6.83 on the bottom. Close my bracket. Execute. And I get a value of, let's go to three decimal places, 0.144. So therefore, my value of k is equal to 0 0.144. So now you have your full solution for p. p is equal to a times 6.83 e to the power of k. 0.144t. So there's my formula that I'm going to use to predict uh, future populations. Okay, I want to see is my solution any good? So it says here, using this model, in what year approximately will the population be at its carrying capacity of 12 billion? So I want to see when does that occur according to model number one. So we're talking about P is equal to 12. So in my solution here, replace P by 12, and that's equal to 6.83 e to the power of 0.144 T. Let me solve that for the time T. So divide by 6.83. That's equal to e to the power of 0.1144t. Get the log of both sides. So the log of 12 over 6.83 is equal to, get the log of this side, and you're left with 0.144t. And therefore, the time t is equal to 1 over 0.144 by the natural log of 12 divided by 6.83. So let me see what that is on my calculator. 
So I go fraction, one over 0 0.144 multiplied by the natural log fraction of 12 billion divided by 6.83 close bracket, execute, get about 3.9, well 3.9, let's make that approximately 4, so the answer there is approximately 4, remember that's 4 decades, so it's 4 decades after uh, 2010, 4 decades after 2010 gives me a year of 2050, but that sounds reasonable. I mean, the population now is just over 8 billion. So in 2050, the population could well be at its current capacity of 12 billion. So, so far, my model seems to work okay. So let me uh, test my equation, my solution a little bit more. So it says in the year 2100, that is 90 years after when we started, which was 2010. That means nine decades, t is equal to nine. What will the population be? So I need to work out that population at t equal to nine. So p is equal to 6.83 e to the power of 0 0.144 by nine. So let me put that into my calculator and see what population I get 90 years from now. So I've got 6.83 multiplied by e to the power of 0 0.144 multiplied by 9, execute, and I get 24.96. What's that? About 25 billion. So after nine decades, 90 years, I get a, a population that's approximately 25 billion. Now that's a completely unrealistic answer. Uh, the earth will not be able to sustain um, that population. As we said, our carrying capacity uh, is estimated to be about 12 billion. So 25 billion just is impossible. This particular simple model that I've got, it works very well for low values of time, but look, it just keeps on increasing and increasing and increasing uh, forever and ever. It never reaches a carrying capacity. So I'm gonna to have to refine that model in model number two, where I take that carrying capacity into account.